Welcome to Season 4 of She Lancer, Mom Entrepreneur with VoiceOver Angela. I'm your host, Angela. I'm a full-time voiceover artist and audiobook narrator, and this podcast are the audio versions of my live Q&A chats on YouTube. If you'd like to be part of the live Q&A chats, come on over to my YouTube channel, VoiceOver Angela. I'm live every Tuesday at 12 p.m. EST. We talk about voiceover, the business of voiceover, audiobooks, and so much more. Find more information on my website, voiceoverangela.com. Enjoy today's episode. Hey, hey, good morning, good afternoon, good evening, wherever you currently are. <laughs> Thank you for joining me again for another live community chat session here on my channel. If you're new to this channel or new to seeing me, then welcome. We uh, appreciate you spending some time with us. Uh, my name is Angela. I am a full-time voiceover artist and audiobook narrator. And my channel is dedicated to those of you that are just getting started in this wonderful world of voiceover and audiobook narration. And through my channel, my hopes is to share with you some tips and tricks and techniques that I use every day in my own voiceover business. And then we get together weekly in these community chats, usually talking about a particular topic or two. <laughs> if you're not new here, then you know every week we have a new poll, which is our topic of discussion for today. And today's, and uh, in case you hadn't noticed, we've been talking about audiobooks a lot here. The last few weeks, we've been talking about different aspects of audiobooks. And of course, this question comes up a lot. And like, how do I figure out uh, which pay type to choose when I'm looking to audition for an audiobook? Or if an author approaches you with an offer and they ask, you know, what pay type would you prefer? Or if you're open to one versus the other. And you're like, I have no idea what these are. <laughs> I don't know how to calculate it. Which one is better? So that's what we're going to talk about today. So today's poll, of course, is what pay type do you look for when you're auditioning for an audiobook? I want to know what you guys are zeroing in on. What are you looking for when you're looking to audition for a book? And it looks like so far we have about 23 votes. 9% uh, of you said royalty share. This is what RS stands for. Uh, RS plus, which is royalty share plus. And I will get into what all of these different pay types mean. 26% uh, of you said royalty share plus. 42% of you, 44% of you said per finished hour, which is PFH. And then it looks like uh, a good quarter of you, 24% of you said, I don't know what these are. So that's good. At least we can go through these and explain what these different pay types are. So as an audiobook narrator, there are three different ways to be paid. First one is royalty share, which is usually referred to as RS. And royalty share is basically what it sounds like. On Audible, an author can, um, when they produce an audiobook, and they, they will receive 40% of the royalties of each sale of that book. So if they're sharing in the royalties of that book, then you split that 40%, 20 to the narrator or producer, and 20% to the author. And then you share those royalties on every sale of that audiobook for the next seven years, at least. Royalty share. Actually, let me start with per finished hour after royalty share. Per finished hour is a flat rate determined by you, the producer. Um, and that is based on a finished hour of audio. Now, a finished hour of audio is generally about 9,300 words. And that is a finished hour of audio, meaning, especially in the beginning, it takes us a little bit longer to get all of these things done to make a finished hour. But typically, it takes about, I might be a little generous here, but five to seven hours, perhaps, to create a finished hour, especially in the beginning. But as you go along, it will, that ratio will shrink down a little bit. I think currently, I'm more of like a two to one, like every two hours of work, to create a finished audio, uh, hour of audio. 
that finished hour is going to include all the narration, all the editing, all the mastering, all the formatting to create a finished hour. So general rule of thumb is for every hour of narration or every finished hour of narration is about two hours of actual narration. And of course, that might be a little bit generous and everybody's going to be a little bit different. But if you take in consideration that you're going to have retakes, right, you're going to redo lines maybe multiple times. You're going to take a pause to take a breath, take a drink of water, perhaps go use the restroom, right? So roughly about two hours of narration for every 9,300 words. And then another maybe three to five hours, again, depending on your skill level and your practice, you know, um, to edit, format, and master that audio. And when I say edit, format, and master, I mean remove all the retakes, reduce some of those long pauses, take out, you know, maybe the dog next door was barking for about a minute and cut that out, right? Uh, mastering is getting your audio under control, controlling your noise floor or reducing the noise in the room, adding the EQ, maybe a mouth click reducer, <laughs> right? Mastering the audio, the audio quality. And then the formatting is then getting the specs correct, right? Getting your RMS correct, which is a standard for ACX, meeting the noise floor, uh, adjusting the proper room tone duration at the head and tail of each file, making sure that the sample rate and bit depth are correct, right? And learning all of that and getting that six hours of finished hour of that six hours of finished hour work getting that down to maybe two or three hours takes a little bit of time but you can get there as you just get you know inherently better with the process and learning your dawn things like that but um getting back to the pay type most people I find, myself included, my very first book was at $50 per finished hour. And you're going to go, Angela, what are you talking about? $50 for seven hours of work? I get it. I get it. And I sort of looked at it like paid internship, right? But I have to note that even before I was narrating audiobooks for ACX or, you know, for, for pay, I donated my time, uh, with LibriVox.org. This is where you can volunteer to narrate audiobooks, either in, you know, by chapter or section or books in their entirety. And in doing that, I was able to get used to the process, um, learn the formatting process, the editing process, right, without charging somebody for what I consider to be my incompetence. So having said that, in the very beginning, if you're still a little bit wary on charging someone, um, you know, full industry standard rate, you can charge whatever you want to charge. So if you don't want to charge $50 per finished hour, you don't have to. But the industry, 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 industry standard is $250 per finished hour. And it just goes up from there with your experience level. Um, so, for example, if a book is roughly about 20,000 words, that's a little over two finished hours. So then that would be a little over, what, $500 for a little over two uh, finished hours, right? You get the idea. Now, Royalty Share Plus, I'm sorry for the tangent, Royalty Share Plus is sort of a hybrid between the two. And it's typically a smaller per finished hour rate up front and then you share the royalties on every book sale going forward. So that is what the three different pay types are. So going back to look at the, uh, now that you guys know the definition of these, it looks like we're up to 37 votes. So 5% of you said royalty share, 16% of you said royalty share plus, and 50% of you said per finished hour. And that's kind of what I was expecting to see. And then 26% of you don't know what these are. So I'm hoping that helps to sort of demystify what these, what these pay types are. And I think when choosing what, what pay type for which book, um, 
what you need to look at, especially if you're looking for royalty share, royalty share plus, you want to make sure that you're getting a return on your investment, right, of time and perhaps training and, you know, learning your DAW and your performance technique and all of these things. So when you're looking at a royalty share or royalty share plus uh, book that's listed for that pay type, you want to look at uh, the book sales rank. You want to look at the book's reviews. You want to look at the author. Do they have a following? Do they have other, other books under their belt that are doing well, right? Is it likely that their fans are going to come and purchase this audiobook? Is it going to sell well, really? Um, also, what is the... Uh, what is the context of the book? Is it something that perhaps is informational and evergreen? Is it something that's on trend right now that will sell well now and maybe taper off in the future? You want to look at all these things and take all these things that can, into consideration because royalty share can pay well for seven years if you choose a book that fits with some of those parameters, right? But again, the beauty of this business is that it is your business. You can run it however you want to. If you want to just help an indie author out and do it for royalty share when they have a debut novel, I mean, that's up to you. If you think that's something that's going to sell well, then do it. But royalty share plus and royalty share, um, I think, are often overlooked um, because of there's no instant return, right? It's It could potentially turn out to be more than what you are even considering as per finished hour, right, over the long run. Um, but choose based on that criteria, I think, is a good real rule of thumb. Um, and I do see a lot of uh, selections on ACX. I just want to note this really quick and then we'll move on to the comments. But um, we talked about filtering, finding uh, uh, auditions or, or titles to audition for last week and how to filter for those or really to not filter for those, right? A lot of authors I have seen are choosing unspecified pay type. So make sure that you leave, if you're open to anything or even just looking at what's available, leave that filter for a specific pay type off and you'll get a lot more titles that'll come up in your search. Um, and that just really means that when they choose unspecified, that usually means they're just looking for the best option, right? Maybe they don't know what they want to pay yet. And they're just looking for feedback from you as the professional and what would be most appropriate for this book, right? Okay. Let's go over to the comments and see who's here today. Uh, boop -ba -doop -ba -doop. First in, Rustic Killbilly. Good morning. How are you? Good to see you. Author to voiceover, Christina. Is this Joya? Did you change? Pardon me while I take a sip of my... And I do have my heating plate today, so my coffee should be hot. It is hot. Wonderful. Wonderful. Because usually it's room temperature at this time. <laughs> uh, Christina says, I picked Royalty Share because authors are paid when someone buys your book. As an author that narrates audiobooks, I only expect to be paid royalty share for all formats of the book. I mean, that makes sense. That makes perfect sense. Uh, Glowen is here. Hey, Glowen. Glowen says, order of preference. First, royalty share plus. Uh, second, per finished hour. And then third, royalty share. And I think that's a probably a good way to look at it. Mm-hmm. Uh, Glowen says, good afternoon at voiceover Angela and chat. Hope your coffee is hot and you have snacks. Who the Who's the late one bringing the donuts? Um, we shall see. Oh, you know, I did want to mention, um, oh my goodness. It just came in and waved at me and then ran away. That's right. Billing. Billing. Let's touch on billing really quick. Because um, when you're working through ACX, they're asking you for a bank, your bank information and the, ta the 1099 stuff and all of that. And that is because royalty share that it's collected, right, for every sell of the book, every sale of the book that you make is collected and, and sort of hold an escrow for you until the end of the month. And then all of those royalties are then released to you, direct deposited to you every month. But for 
Royalty Share Plus and PFH or per finished hour, you need to invoice the client. They will, for Royalty Share Plus, they will collect all the royalties and send them to you, but you're responsible to collect any per finished hour rate, any direct billing you're responsible for. So how do you do that? I've always used PayPal Business. I've never had an issue with it. You can create invoices there. QuickBooks, I think Wave, you know, any kind of software that allows you to create an invoice is acceptable. Uh, things to talk about in the beginning, in the negotiation stage, is to determine if this is a royalty share plus or a per finished hour book. You want to discuss with the author up front what your preferred invoicing system is or if they have one. But most of the time, I like to stick with what I have so I know for a fact I'm, there's not going to be any you know, shenanigans, right? I want to make sure that I can get paid, that it's going to work, and everything is going to be seamless. Um, you also want to discuss that you're going to collect 50% of that royal of that per finished hour rate up front. And then the remainder is due when the book is complete. I think doing that in and of itself is going to deter anyone that's uh, ill-intentioned, to put it nicely. Um, because as we all know, audiobook production is is a lot of work. It's a lot of time. You know, you're reading the book beforehand. You're developing characters in some cases. There's a lot to it. So you want to have something up front to not only reserve, sort of reserve that time and to make sure that you are both on the same page. This is a, a legit production and here we go. And then the remainder is due when the book is done and the rights holder is happy. I wanted to make sure that I mentioned that. And of course, if you have any questions on anything that I had just mentioned, then please put it in the comments and then we'll we'll make sure that your answers questions. <laughs> make sure that your questions are answered. Need more coffee, apparently. Miriam is here. Hey, Miriam, how you doing? Hello, Angela. And all sometimes I will look at the estimated length and if it's three hours or less and it's a book that interests me, but is royalty share or royalty share plus, I will audition for it. That's good. I, I typically do too. Only because of, of time, really, right? If it's Usually if it's uh, maybe even five hours or six hours and it's royalty share plus and something really interesting and I think will sell really well, then I will look at that too. It's all in, it's sort of like a case by case, right? Dylan's here. Hey, Dylan, I pick my auditions based on what I enjoy narrating and what I feel my voice fits. If I like a book and feel it could sell decent, I audition for royalty share. If it's per finished hour, I will audition no matter what. Tanya, or Tanya, why do I keep saying Tanya? Because I have a friend named Tanya. Tanya says, I look for per finished hour, but it would be nice to see money coming in passively. So I'm looking at doing more royalty share in the future. And that is a great way to look at it. If you can find a few short series that are royalty share and get those done, I mean, you could have that passive income and those do add up, right? I remember uh, Anthony Pika saying at one point that he did, he did a series of like, um, they were like summary books, almost like, think like Cliff's, Cliff's Notes, sort of. It's like a book summary and a whole series of them. And those were royalty share. And he was doing very well with those every, you know, month after month. I mean, they do add up. So don't, don't discount them. Don't discount royalty share. Dylan says, good morning, all from the ice planet Hoth. <laughs> I mean, Michigan. God. I hope everybody is safe and warm with some hot coffee. Me too. Uh, Tanya says, good morning, afternoon, everyone. Yes, ma'am. Pamela, hey, from sunny but soggy LA. I've been watching all of the flooding in San Diego. That's just nuts. Glowen says, if I can click on it, it's a balmy zero degrees Celsius, 32 Fahrenheit, and a little overcast and trying to snow today here in Mon Moncton. Moncton. Am I saying that right? No, I hate saying stuff wrong. That's cold, man. Bear338 is here. Hey, gah. Hello, I'll just realize that what the abbreviations are. Hello, all. I am on time, so I don't have to buy donuts with sprinkles. Or, you know, I don't, I don't discriminate. I mean, if donut doesn't have to have sprinkles or really anything on it, or in it for that matter, it doesn't have to be cream or jelly filled, just plain old donuts. I don't discriminate when it comes to donuts. 
Phil. Hey, Phil, how you been? Haven't seen you in a while. Where you been, Phil? Mary HPVO says, good morning, Angela and everyone. Yes, good morning to you, Mary. Phil says, royalty share plus, non-negotiable. A lot of time is spent on an audition or an audiobook. Royalty share or per finished hour won't be enough. And then your time to complete, you know, the ratio between production to finished is small. Then it is, it can also be very lucrative. It's all about getting to that point, right? In the beginning, charging perhaps a lower per finished hour rate while you're at that one to seven ratio, you know, per finished hour to actual hours. And then as you sort of whittle that down with time and practice and just doing it over and over and over, you just get better at it, right? Naturally. And then once you whittle that down to maybe three hours to each finished hour, you know, and then you increase your rate, it could very well be profitable. MG Steven says, good morning, Angela and everyone. I focus now on mainly per finished hour and some royalty share plus. I've done some royalty share in the past, but they haven't done as well as other types for me. Well, I would say don't, I mean, I guess what I would, the overarching point is to not discount any pay type. I mean, if you look at it, especially for royalty share, royalty share plus, if they are, you know, if they have a fan base, if they sell well, if it's an evergreen topic, you know, don't, don't overlook them. You might be surprised. Rider Dude says, good morning. Annie Waybright. Hey, Annie. How you doing, Annie? Hey, Angela, my VO break is officially over. I took a break because I was burned out and needed a normie job again. But last week, a rights holder found me on Fiverr and asked me to narrate her book. That's awesome. Welcome back from your hiatus. Your sabbatical? VO sabbatical? That's a nice way to welcome, be welcomed back, huh? Congratulations. Rick Hall is here. Good morning, Rick. Good morning to everyone. Brittany Beck. I'm okay with Royalty Share Plus as long as the plus covers editing costs. Do you outsource your editing? Perhaps, is that why? Inquiring minds want to know. Tanya says, I love your dog clicker idea. Works great for me. Yeah, uh, and if you don't know what she's talking about, there's two different ways to edit, usually, I find. Um, it's, it's kind of 50-50, right? Some people will do punch and roll, meaning as you're narrating, you make a mistake, you stop, and then you fix it right then and there. You sort of edit as you go. Or there is the clicker method, right? I use a dog clicker to mark my mistakes. And it's not that one is better than the other. One way to, mar one way to do this is better than the other. It's just, I guess, what works better for you. For me, I can't really take myself out of the moment and stop and then go back and re-record. I'd much rather just mark the mistake and move on and then come back in the editing process and, re and remove the retakes. And then you might be saying, well, that just takes longer. Well, maybe, but it gives me a little more peace of mind because then I, as I'm going through removing all of the retakes, I sometimes have the option to choose from a few retakes and which one sounds better. So I've usually have a few options to choose from. And I can also look for any errant noises that perhaps I missed while I was narrating. Maybe I was in the heat of the moment and I missed maybe uh, a horn honk outside and I missed it and it's in the audio. I need to remove that, right? It's sort of like editing and proofing all at one time. And then I can also catch any errant like mouth clicks or anything that perhaps my effects didn't remove. So it's sort of like a a final once over for me as I'm editing those retakes. So you can kind of go either way that you is more comfortable for you, but that's the way that I prefer to do it. And if you don't have a dog clicker or you have dogs that were trained by a dog clicker and come running every time you click the dog clicker, you can also clap, snap your fingers, cluck your tongue, something that will make a sharp, you know, impression in your waveform as you're recording. So that's what that means. Tangent number two. Dwight says, hey, gang, happy Tuesday. Happy Tuesday to you, my friend. Eric. Hey, Eric, how you doing? Good morning. I ask for a thousand per finished hour. So far, no nibbles. <laughs> Do you really? You don't. Tanya says, nah, no tangent, just teaching us. Okay. Sometimes I feel like I go off on tangents, but and I'm just babbling. <laughs> I don't want to be a babbling fool. Joy, 
Hi, Joy. Good morning, Angela, from Southfield, Michigan, where it's 36 degrees and we're getting a freezing rain mix. That sounds like zero fun, Joy. <laughs> oh, my gosh. Uh, Zimzada music. I like that. It's cute. Good morning, all. First time to be able to catch a live. So glad to be here with everyone. Well, we're glad to have you. So glad that you're here. Brian is here. Hey, Brian. Good morning, Brian. Uh, Brittany then says, also, update on the heated jacket. I saw that. No interface. No interference. Not interface. Super pleased with it as a narrator with a cold recording space. I thought about getting one of those. And if there's no interference, that's super sweet. I like it. <laughs> We're all running to Amazon. Adds to cart. <laughs> that's awesome. Heated blankets, too. Heated blankets, beanies. If you need a beanie, if you check out my shop, I have VO Life beanies in my shop that I've created. I've got all, all kinds of like clothing articles that I've created. Check it out. Sweaters, too. Tanya says, is it common to help the author market the books on social media? Absolutely. Especially if it's royalty share and royalty share plus. You definitely want to be involved. I mean, you should help market the book that you helped to produce because it was sort of a team effort, right? But especially if it's royalty share and royalty share plus, absolutely. Because you are sharing in the sale of every book. So yes, you would absolutely want to help promote it. A great way to do that is to take the, with the author's permission, of course, although I don't think they're going to fight you on it if you're helping to promote the book, but always get the author's permission, is to perhaps take the retail sample and then add a static image to it in, um, like, if you have don't have Premiere Pro or, like, any kind of free video editing software, you could use Headliner. If you go to headliner.app, that is mainly for podcast, like, promotionals, right? You can add audio to it and then a static image, maybe the cover art for the book, and then you can make a little social media book trailer, and then you can share it on your social media or anywhere else, or give it to the author as like um, a benefit to working with you, or you can make that an extra add-on as well, just food for thought. But yeah, absolutely. Promote that book. Tanya says, good idea with a heating plate for your coffee. Yes, I got this for Christmas last year. And I couldn't find a place to plug it in. I finally just said, okay, I'd figure it out, Angela. You can figure out all this other streaming stuff. You can figure out where to plug in a heating plate. So I did. And now I'm happy I did. Because <sighs> now my coffee is hot. Instead of being like, you know, tepid or room temperature. <laughs> Just get with the program, Angela. Dylan says, if you accepted Royalty Share, Royalty Share Plus, Royalty Share, Royalty Share Plus, it will only help you if you market it. Absolutely. I think you should absolutely market. I think you should help market it anyway. Right? Why not? Help that author out. It's not like, you know, it's just a job. I mean, it's important. That's a big deal. You're creating, you're breathing life into someone's baby right? Some of the, they spent a lot of time and effort and probably money in the editing and the proofing and the, you know, if they had arc readers and things, it's a lot of effort to create this book and you're giving it life. You know, yes, it's a big deal. Promote it. Writer Dude says, I think I would do a balance royalty share or royalty share plus for some books that have a good potential for producing future income. There will be times when I need to take a hiatus. That's a good point. Or if you want to take a vacation, maybe not like a hiatus hiatus, but if you wanted to take like a month off to, to rest and spend time with family, right? And then you still have a little bit of that passive income coming in. Absolutely. Joy says, hmm, never thought of that. So choosing Royalty Share Plus might be a good thing. It is. None of these pay types are bad, right? They all have appropriate titles. Like, like there will be titles that are appropriate for one versus the other, you know. But again, being a business owner, you can make that decision. 
on which ones or what standards or what, you know, criteria they have to meet in order to be one pay type or the other. But I think knowledge is power, right? Now that you guys know and have a little bit of my input and insight, I mean, go forth and make your own decisions, of course, but I hope that explaining what these were and what to look for definitely helps. Brittany back to Tanya says, I like to share what I'm working on because it gives me content for my page and helps sell the book. Absolutely. Absolutely. Brian says, I want at this point royalty share plus and per finished hour, especially if it's going to make more than five per finished hour. At this point in my journey, I got bills to pay. Absolutely. What time is that? Okay. I've got about another half an hour before I need to run away. Let's see. Uh, Rocio Rosales says, how do I get a tax ID? Um, depending on where you are. And, and of course, I'm, I have to say I'm not a tax professional. But if we're talking about tax IDs, it's either going to be your social security number or your business tax ID. That's basically all that is. Uh, Annie says, with my first per finished hour book, I asked for half up front, half at the end, and the rights holder refused because she was ghosted by a narrator when they asked for that. So I did the entire book free and she ghosted me. <sighs> Not to give you, you know, a paper cut and pour lemon juice in it, but I think that, that she didn't want to. And I can tell that you have a big heart for doing that and for trying to just help somebody out. But I'm, I'm sure that was a very valuable and painful lesson. And I hope everybody watching this takes that to heart too, because this is ultimately, again, a business. And you have to make calculated decisions on who you want to work with and why. And in that situation, I would have probably felt bad for her as well, but I would have to stick to my guns because there are, there just are ill-intentioned people in the world that know what words to use to, you know, get empathy or sympathy from you. So I, that sucks. That really stinks that that happened. I'm hoping it wasn't a lot of time that you spent on it, a meaning that it wasn't like a very large book. That's terrible. Um, although if you have any kind of uh, correspondence, depending on what platform you found this person on, you might get a little recourse there. But that is another reason why it's important that if you're working through ACX to keep your messaging with everyone on ACX. So ACX can get involved and mitigate if needed. Right. But if you have any kind of correspondence at all, there might be some recourse, you know, with an attorney or something. Of course, I'm not giving any kind of advice. I'm just saying that's what I would do, perhaps. And he says, now I ask for thirds, a third up front and a third in the middle and a third at the end. That's interesting. Awesome. And Nobody balks, huh? That's cool. Author to voiceover Christina says, attempting to upload that video from last night. So on this account today, ah, the, now she was in uh, our platinum group discord uh, and Caesar were giving out great information about uh, effect rack, effects racks and EQ. That's awesome. Thank you for, thank you for doing that. And he says, also, I got my first royalty share payment last month, three cents. I'm rolling in the dough over here. Hey, man, that's three cents more than you had the day before. It does add up. It does add up. And they're not all going to be, you know, super big money makers, right? Old Slacker says, recently landed my first big audiobook contract. A little worried I bit off more than I can chew, though. It's 12 hours and the author turned down the first 15 minutes. A bit worried. Any advice? Um, did, I'm sure they gave you a reason as to why it was turned down. Was it the pace too fast, too slow? Were you over enunciating, sounding like you were reading every word? I mean, what was the reasoning they gave you? I think based on that would be um, 
I might be able to give advice on how to move forward. But feedback from the client, if they're turning it down, why are they turning it down so I can address it and fix it and then move forward? But the trick here is to not get sucked into, don't let that imposter syndrome come knocking on your door. Know that there is a solution. You just need the information to get to the right solution for both you and the rights holder. Very worst case, if the author is not, or the rights holder is not going to come to any common ground with you, if there's nothing you can do, I mean, just dissolve the contract. You can do that too. So, and then try again. I mean, not every situation, not every job is going to just run perfectly and smoothly. Again, this is a business. There's going to be good times. There's going to be bad times. There's going to be difficult situations and there's going to be cake pie in the sky situations. It's not always going to be linear, right? It's going to be ups and downs. And But every situation like this and you know, like Annie had, it's all learning opportunities on what to spot going forward, how to improve going forward. That's how I see it. Sue me. <laughs> They're learning opportunities, right? Just to make you stronger, thicker skinned, smarter, and you know what you're looking at and what you're looking for going forward. <clears throat> All good things. Uh, Glowen says, Monkton was a nice try though. Hey, I gave it a shot. Uh, uh, Bear338 says, so I literally froze and laser focused when you started talking about billing. I was in the middle of washing my hands. <laughs> Plate warmers for coffee is amazing. I love mine. Uh, yes. Yes. Okay. So I hope I touched on everything important in terms of billing. If you have any questions, please ask. Dwight says, what are your donut type preferences? Regular donut, crueler, mmm. You know, I'm partial to maple bars and chocolate bars, you know, like the, what do they call them? The long johns. I like those. Um, I don't really like cake donuts. I'm more, I like the French, are they French crullers? Is that what they call them? They're sort of like, they look like, like mini bunt cakes. I like those too. They're sort of flaky. And fritters. Cherry fritters. <laughs> Love cherry fritters. Those are my bag, baby. Rudder Dude says, kind of a wet winter here near Seattle. Well, it's Seattle, <laughs> right? Creating some problems over in Pierce County. But as long as it rains, it isn't snowing, except in the mountains where it belongs. Yeah, we have, we have snow in Flagstaff too right now too. It's actually, it's literally raining right now here in Arizona as well. My area of Arizona anyway. Uh, Brittany says, I'm starting to look for an editor. I found I just don't like it and want to spend my time recording instead. And that is something else to consider, it, especially if you're if you're in the uh, place where Brittany is. If you just don't want to edit, can't get it, don't want to deal with it, whatever, whatever pay type and price structure you choose, you're going to have to allot some of that for paying a producer or paying an editor, right? So if you're one of those that just can't, I can't do editing at all. I just want to narrate and then pass those files off to somebody else to edit format master for me. Then you want to make sure that your pay, what your rate, the rate that you tell a rights holder that you want is going to be sufficient enough, not only to cover your time, but also to pay the editor or the post producer. Right. So you have to take all of those things into account. Otherwise, if it's royalty share, maybe even royalty share plus, it may end up being just an expense that you may or may not even recoup. Right. So you have to take into account that cost when you determine your pay rate. Right. Dwight says, how does ACX pay royalty share, royalty share plus when they put a book you narrated out for free on Audible? Um, it's still a dollar amount. Right. I think the free on Audible is like a like a promotion thing. It's not like you just get nothing. You're still going to get what the book is worth. I'm pretty sure. Um, I would double check ACX. Don't quote me. 
double check ACX, but I don't think they can just pay you zero. I think it's like a promotion, like a like a coupon that they do. But you should you should still get the amount that the book is worth as your 20%. It's a uh, because there's also in uh, Christina, if you're still here, correct me if I'm wrong, but if you're on KDP, you can choose to promote the book with like a, a discounted rate, like a promotional rate for a certain period of time, right? But you should still get what the book is worth. But I would double check ACX to be sure, unless that is changed, but that's what I think. Uh, ben Cross says, I could only do punch and roll if the computer is in the booth with me. Otherwise, I use a sound marker. Yeah, logistics is going to be another thing to determine whether or not you are uh, punch and roll and, you know, team punch and roll or team clicker or sound marker. Um, do you have a way in your recording area to mark the mistakes or to go back and do punch and roll? I think um, in your situation, if you don't have a computer in the booth with you, I know some people will run a, a second monitor in their booth and then maybe a Bluetooth keyboard and mouse. So you could do these things in the booth and leave your computer outside. It's kind of what I do in here because my computer is in is outside of this room. So I have extra long cables that run in here to power the monitor. And I have a Bluetooth Logitech keyboard and mouse that run off of one USB connector, right? It's like a magic connector that both of these things run off of. So there are ways around logistics. If you're, you know, you might have to get creative, but you could probably figure it out. Uh, Davina says, hello from Osaka, Japan. Wow, welcome. I've always wanted to go there. Randy Moore says, is there a Discord? Uh, my Platinum group has a private Discord, yes. And if you wanna check out my Platinum group, I know I have a lot of Platinum group members that usually are here on Tuesday. Uh, my Platinum group, if you check out my website, voiceoverangela.com, my Platinum group is what is what we're always talking about, where we meet every Thursday night and we do, we sort of gamify learning. We have a lot of fun. This week is Wheel of Emotions. It's always a good time. And then we have a private Discord. I have practice scripts. I have mini challenges. I have a lot of stuff that comes with that membership. That's so, that's where you find it. Dylan says to Ben Cross, I have a computer outside the booth and I snaked a monitor, mouse, and keyboard into the booth. Mm -hmm. Or if you could Bluetooth even the keyboard and the mouse, you could do that. Uh, Robert Reed is here. Hey, Robert, good morning. I love the way you talk to everyone, just like we're family, because we are. Because <laughs> we are, as far as I'm concerned. Um, old Slacker says, with Royalty Share Plus, which is 20%, I believe, yes, through ACX, how much to charge the accompanying per finished hour? That is up to you. That is also just like per finished hour, that's going to be something you determine, but I find it's usually a smaller amount than your regular rate. For example, let's just say that your per finished hour rate is $100 per finished hour. So Royalty Share Plus, you could offer $50 per finished hour, and then royalties going forward. You could do that too but it's, it's up to you to determine that rate or negotiate with the rights holder on what that rate should be. Uh, Rocio says, first time on your live. Welcome. Good morning from California. How do I obtain a tax ID? Again, your tax ID is either your social security number or your business tax ID. Randy Moore says, it looks like the link to join the platinum group is broken in the, descri in the description. Oh, for the video. I'll go, I'll go check it out and, and, and uh, fix it if it's broken. It's an old link and, you know, things update. So I apologize for that. But it, if you just go to voiceoverangela.com and go to the, if you hover over the VO workshop tab, you'll see a, a page called plans and pricing. Then you'll see, you know, some of the courses that I have and my Fiverr gig review. But the very first thing you see will be the platinum membership. But thank you for letting me know. So I'll go back and fix it. Eric says of, if I can click on him, of course not. That was a joke. Too early? No, not at all. I thought I thought it was a joke. Um, I think I know what you're reading. You're pretty close to industry, industry standard now, right? 
Robert Reed says, what is your daily average time on the job of audiobooks? Um, it, really, it's it depends on my workload and what I'm doing that day. As you guys know, I do a lot of uh, online, like group mentoring, one-on-one -on -one mentoring. Um, so, and then I also do all kinds of other voiceovers and editing and in addition to audiobook work. So I have a lot on my plate. So it really just depends on what's going on that day. But for the most part, I'll spend um, anywhere from two hours to 13 hours in this room every day. It just depends on what's happening. Or usually, typically the weekends, I'll spend less time in here because I, I'd like to dedicate my weekends to my family. But most every day of the week, Monday through Friday, I'm in here from, you know, 9 a.m. to 5 or 6 p.m., depending on, you know, what's going on. Randy Moore says the, regi the residual from Royalty Share and Royalty Share Plus for me is how I have sustained my career so far. As far as what to charge, old slacker, I think that really depends on your current rates and booking percentage. That's a good point, too. That's a good point, too. Old slacker says to Randy Moore, thank you, Randy. I'm just starting out. So charging basic rates. Oh, we just got a super chat. Hold on. Hold on. Sean Lester, thank you so much for the super chat. I appreciate you. I can't think of anything I need to ask, but thanks for being here. I look forward to lunchtime with Angela. Oh, that's so sweet. Thank you, Sean. You're a doll. I appreciate you guys. Um, What time is it? I got about 15 minutes. And I got to be out of here. So let's get through these. Okay. Uh, Adekoya, did I say that right? Adekoya Gabriel? Hi, miss. My name is Gabriel from Nigeria. I'm a big fan of your videos. Well, thank you. I just recently started the book narration journey through Find Away Voices. It's kind of tasky. It is. Nowhere will you find that audiobook production is easy. It is a lot of work, but there you have to have passion for it. You have to have the passion for books and creating audiobooks for sure. Randy says, check if the author has any other books and what the sales on those books look like. Absolutely. Uh, Gabriel then says, coupled with background noise, even with plugins to remove background noise, it makes me sound weird. Um, I think we might have lost the first part of your... Um, either way, background noise is a factor. You have to find a quiet, dedicated place to record audiobooks. There are some effects that can help within many of the DAWs and then to be purchased outside of like independent um, sources like waves.com. And then of course, Isotope, both of those sites have plugins that you can purchase and then integrate into your DAW to help you reduce background noise. But usually background noise comes from a, a noisy computer, a background fan, right? Um, a rumble from the HVAC system. I mean, it could be any number of things, but if you use too much of a noise reducer, it will make you sound funny. So if you if your voice ends up sounding very tinny or almost like pixelated, it's probably because you're using too much noise reducer and you need to find out the root problem and reduce it or remove it, right? So if you have a noisy computer nearby your microphone, that's probably the, vic you know, the, um, the victim. <laughs> That's probably what it is. So move your computer further away if you can. So the microphone doesn't pick it up as loudly. If you get my drift. Annie says regarding the rights holder who ghosted me, ACX couldn't do anything to help. They just emailed her. The payout would have been $175. So it wasn't enough to pursue litigation. I took it as an expensive lesson. Wow. Um, I have, I, I'm going to, ha I need to get through these quickly. So uh, Gabriel says, what made audiobook narration? It's not easy for anyone. <laughs> it's work. It's work. It's training. It's practice. It's learning your DAW, learning what effects you can use, learning how to make your space sound the best it can, and just practice, practice, practice. It is not easy at all. I would never say it's easy. Uh, do you have a course on audiobook narration? I I'm literally in the middle of working on one right now. It's not ready yet, but I hopefully will finish it as soon as there are more hours in the day. I'm trying to finish it. I'm trying to finish it. Colette is here. Hey, Colette. I'm going to Quartzite this weekend. Is it raining there too? Um, I don't know. 
I don't know. I know this storm has lasted for over 24 hours at this point. It's been raining for over 24 hours. So I'd imagine it's pretty large, but I don't know if it's over quartzite. If I had to guess, probably yes, but I would check your your weather app. The weather app on your phone will probably tell you for sure. Joy says, Angela, if a client hires me and talks contract, do I have to present the contract first or is it the client's responsibility? It depends on what platform you're on. ACX will have templates of contracts that you can use. Actually, point of fact, if you go to the, I think it's the legal page on ACX or legal documents or something like that, they have downloadable contracts that you can download, edit to put your name in and things and then use for other situations as well. Um, but if it's a platform that doesn't offer contracts with the, the use of the platform, then having your own is definitely going to be uh, something you want to look at. Ben Cross says, that is what I do. I use my Android tablet as a second screen and a Bluetooth keyboard. There you go. You got to do what you got to do as long as you can do it. Bear338 says, all of the last of what I need to complete my budget sound room, I will be recording the build from start to finish and will post on our Facebook page. Working on headshot web page. Good. Sounds like you got a plan of attack. Hope you have an open seat in your platinum group. Uh, looks like you will have a bear incoming. <laughs> We'd love to have you. Hey, the more the merrier. I mean, the more it's more like a mastermind, right? The more uh, perception, the more input, the more experience, the more like different takes. And, you know, it's it makes it that much better. The more the merrier, I say. Uh, T. Nick says, I've decided to take a short break from narrating because I'm going to be moving in the next month. So I want to figure that out and spend time getting my studio set up on the new house before I go back. That is a great plan. Always focus more on your recording space than anything else in the beginning. Absolutely. Angela, hey, great name. If you start with your social security number as your tax ID on ACX, can you change it to your business tax ID when you start your own LLC? I think depending on the LLC that you have, you still might be required, like if you're a sole proprietor or something. And of course, I have to say I am not a tax professional, so I'm not giving tax advice. I'm just telling you what I know or what I have experienced. But if you're an LLC, like a sole proprietor or something like that, I think you still use your social security number. But again, if you're unsure, ask ACX or ask your uh, tax professional. Zimzada Music says, I just published my very first Fiverr VO gig. Congratulations. Excited and nervous at the same time. Baby steps. Exactly. That's all it is. Baby steps. As long as they're forward, right? Dwight says, Platinum Group is the best value at $20 a month. I think so. Thank you, Dwight. Dwight Writer Dude says, it's easy to set up your laptop or tower outside of your booth. Most monitors have a long cord and you can hook up your wired keyboard and mouse with a USB hub and a USB extension cord. I think that's what I started out with at first was like a hub. But I found that it just, it took, it was kind of wonky sometimes with the juice usage. I don't know the best way to explain that, but using the Logitech where they share one USB input was ultimately the best solution for me. But of course, do what works better for you and your situation. Tinex says, if I'm interested in doing a mentorship with you, how would I go about that? I have a few different options on my website. I have one-on-one -on -one single sessions that you could just, you know, pick my brain for a half an hour. Or if you want something specific that you need to work through, like accountability, uh, setting up profiles, things like that, that might take more time than just a single session. I have mentorship programs for either four weeks or 12 weeks. Again, all of this stuff is on my website. And then, of course, if you prefer a group setting or you just want to sit back and lurk and listen to other people talk, that's also on my website. That's the Platinum Group. Uh, Eric says... Join the Platinum Group. We rock. We do rock, even if I do say so myself. Masonry Construction says tax ID specifically. If you are a sole entrepreneur filing personally, it's an SSN. If corp, you set up your guide, you will get an EIN. C. Robert says, Eric looks like Dennis Miller, the comedian. <laughs> Chris, uh, Chris says, when a book is free, it is a promo for 30 days, like KDP has a few types of sales, but the one ACX uses is free, is that authors makes a percentage of the membership fees for the month. You get paid less, you get paid less, continued. Uh, I'll post the details of this for Dwight in the Discord later tonight with screenshots of the wording. Perfect. 
Thank you, Chris, as always. JCCAOL says, I will probably go with royal royalty share, at least for the books that I write. For all those listening from the upper Midwest, be careful while on the road. Yes. Pretty much everywhere right now is just crazy. James Thompson says, woohoo for an audiobook course. Thank you for everything you do, Angela. Oh, good. I'm glad to hear there's a little bit of <laughs> interest in it. I just need to get it done. Uh, Dylan says, Angela, are you a tax professional? No, <laughs> Dylan. I'm a donut professional, perhaps, but <laughs> I'm not a tax professional. Uh, JCCAOL says, Angela, you're a woman after my own heart. I like just a plain old donut myself. Yes, I, I mean, I don't discriminate. Donuts are delicious, man. I'm not not so much on the cake donuts, but every other kind of, maybe not even jelly. Well, I guess it depends on what kind of jelly it is. <laughs> donuts, I mean, hello. Anyway, I have got to go. It's an early day uh, out of school today, so I've got to go retrieve my kiddo. But uh, I will see you guys all next week. Same bat time, same bat channel. And my platinum group, I will see you all on Thursday. Bye, everybody. Thank you for listening to She Lancer Mom Entrepreneur with voiceover Angela. That's me. For more information about me, visit my website, voiceoverangela.com, or hop on over to my YouTube channel, Voice Over Angela. Again, thanks for listening. Have a great day.